Howdy Coos and fellow RV nuts. <laughs> Welcome back to the Zach Life. This is painting 99, sort of like painting 101, but we're a couple of steps back. So, as you may know, or you may not, I'm building a, a Super C Toter Home. 70 style, we're gonna have a 77 Peterbilt truck on the front of it, blah, 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 blah. Because of that, I've started following a bunch of RV forums and some groups on Facebook. And uh, I realize that not everybody knows everything. And there's a, some things that I can help teach some people, but there's one, one aspect of the, of the RV restora restoration that I want to tackle right now. So, here's my problem I have with all this. So somebody gets on Facebook and they say, hey, I'm restoring this, you know, 1970 model, somewhere or another travel trailer, which is great. That's awesome, that's cool. I know people say, oh, it isn't worth it. The trailer would never be worth what you spend on it. And that's true, but I get it. I like old things. That's, that's my cup of tea. So, here's my problem. Somebody gets on there and says, hey, I'm restoring this 70 model travel trailer and the paint's coming off of it. What do I paint it with? And somebody gets on there and says, hey, all you need is go to Walmart and get you a gallon of Rust-Oleum and brush it on. Now, it's true if you go get a gallon of Kills White Primer and you smear that on the side of aluminum travel trailer that it's gonna change its color. But that's about the only thing you're gonna accomplish because the first time you go through a car wash, you're gonna wash all that latex paint off the side of that motorhome. I'm not giving a hard time to the people that, that wanna spend 500 bucks to restore their motorhome because if you want to go get you a can of Kills Primer and, and, and just pour it on top of it and run it down the sides and paint it white, that's fine because I can rig stuff up too and I'm not bashing you. But if you want to take something and paint it and have it look good, and the most important thing to me is not necessarily to look good, even though if you paint something you want it to look good, but it's that it stays on there, that it does what it's designed to do. And these paint coatings are designed to stop corrosion. They're designed to, to seal and protect the metals, the woods, the steel, aluminum, whatever, the fiberglass from, from UV harm, from corrosion, whatever. And that's, to me, that's the biggest point. This video right here, this point right now in time, is sort of an excerpt, if you would, out of the middle of another one of my videos, even though this video isn't going to be in the center. Uh, Timeline-wise, we're, we're kind of stepped right in the middle of the video. I'm, I'm redoing this door. Just going inside of my coach. I bought this off eBay for really inexpensive. It was beat all up. I took this out of the center of it and I made a new one. This is 22 gauge steel. The bottom is some kind of glass reinforced plastic, something or other. I don't know. You can watch the video if you want to hear about it. I'm fixing to paint this thing and we're going to go through step by step what kind of chemicals you use, why, some technique, though I'm not the guy necessarily to ask if you want to know exactly how to do a perfect spring technique. You can get on YouTube, you can find those kind of things. But there's not a lot of good information of, say for instance, you buy this gallon of nascent urethane paint, why can't I just paint, the, paint my motorhome with that? Well, there's a reason. So. Here's what, here's why, we're gonna take a few steps and we're gonna go outside, we're gonna paint this thing out in the dirt, out in the dust, out in the sun. One important point I wanna make in this video is that it's not that you need a paint booth. It's not that you need a $500 paint gun or God-given talent to be able to paint. It's that you need a little elbow grease, some good knowledge, and you need the correct kind of paint. And you can make nice things that will last for years and years and years. I'd like to start out by saying that I realize this whole paint thing is confusing and one of the big problems is today manufacturers use words and, and terms that are not the same. They don't mean the same thing as they did years ago. As like they have things they call enamel paints that are water based. Used to enamel meant only oil based paints. You'll have things like rattle cans that say enamel that are actually lacquer based paints. That makes this very confusing and I realize that. Let's talk about the different kinds of paints and the, and the redundancy in the names and what they all mean. Several different kind of, uh, subgroups of paints. 
Uh, the first that you'll run across is stuff like at Lowe's, Home Depot. You'll see acrylic, water-based, and latex. Now, water-based and latex are exactly the same thing. Just different, different names for the same thing. Uh, and, and acrylic and water-based slash latex paints are actually both acrylic resins. The difference in the two paints are the and I'm not exactly sure on this. You can create, you can do some research and, and, and figure out for yourself. But the difference is is what is what suspends the acrylic resins, what they're thinned with. And water-based and latex are basically just mixed with water. They're water soluble. You paint them on, the water evaporates, and the paint dries. With the actual acrylic, what they call acrylic, has got some chemicals and stuff in it. So it is, it is no longer water diluted, if you would. It's not suspended in water. And it, uh, the chemicals and some of the properties of the chemicals, blah, 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 they help uh, the, the paint to be more flexible. It doesn't crack as easily. And it also is, uh, if you put it on wood, like on cabinets or something or wherever, uh, it's, it's not as susceptible to having water damage. Where latex and water-based paint often if you get it wet and, and, and if you get it wet often uh, it'll actually turn loose and it'll peel away uh, from whatever you painted it on. Another problem with the latex and acrylic paints is that if you've got an older coat that's got oil based or lacquer paints in it which is going to be common if you've got a you know 20, 30, 40 year old coach you cannot put a water based paint over an oil based paint. Some people say you can sand it whatever it is absolutely not recommended. I personally stay completely away from the water-based latex acrylic paints. If you're if you're on the interior and you're painting wood cabinets, that kind of stuff, uh, I like the oil-based enamel. Lacquer paint works great too, especially if it's in a uh, a piece of trim or something that's not going to get wet. Don't recommend it in a bathroom where the cabinets on run your sink. But it's, a, it's an extremely good paint too. Now it smells terrible and that's the drawback to lacquer and, and the enamels is a lot of that way too. The, the great advantage to uh, the water-based latex paint is that it's odorless. Oil-based enamels, lacquer, urethanes. What's advantages, disadvantages? What works, what doesn't? So. Oil based enamels have a polym they have a polymer matrix, blah blah blah, bunch of chemistry, don't know, doesn't matter. When an oil based enamel dries, when it cures, it has polymer chains that are created in it. And it can no longer be softened. You can't take a dry oil based paint and put it into paint thinner and soften it. Once it's dry, it stays dry. It's dry forever. When you stack multiple coats of oil-based paint, they stay as untied together separate coats. If you put three coats, there's actually three, you know, if you cut a cross section, there's actually three different coats of the paint. They, they do not chemically become one. Now lacquer paint is different. This is natural cellulose lacquer. Like this is a bucket of lacquer thinner. Cellulose thinners. Lacquer paint. When you spray, and lacquer must be sprayed very thin. When you spray a coat of lacquer on top of another coat of lacquer, the top, the lacquer thinner and the top coat dissolves the paint beneath it, and the two coats become one. Now also, lacquer thinner will very quickly dissolve oil-based enamel paints. Now this becomes a big problem because if you spray a lacquer paint over an oil-based enamel, the lacquer thinner in the lacquer paint will dissolve the enamel paint. You can't do that. You can never put lacquer paint over enamel. Now, urethanes. Urethane paint you sort of get the best of both worlds. You get the best properties of both. So a urethane paint has similar properties in that 
once it's dry, once, once, once the paint is set up, like this coach, if you take lacquer thinner, if you take paint thinner, if you take whatever you want to put on that thing, it's set up. Once that paint is hard, it cannot be dissolved other than something like paint strippers. But the big advantage to it is this stuff right here. This catalyst that's 500 bucks a gallon. And actually right here is a pint. This pint will make a gallon. This is like 70 bucks a pint. What that catalyst does is exactly what lacquer paint does. It allows the coat you put on top to that catalyst dissolves, softens, and chemically adheres within a time frame. Now the recoat window on this is typically only 12 to 36 hours. After 36 hours, the 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 two coats will not chemically bind. They will not become one. But urethane paints have the best of both worlds. After they're dry they're no longer soluble and if you put three or four or five or six or like this motorhome where I've got these stripes you know there's like one two three four five six seven eight nine coats of paint these coats of paint are all chemically one coat you know there's no way you can't flake them apart they're all they're all one you know they're not just glued together so to speak they are one that's the advantage of urethane paints all this paint was bought at O'Reilly's. It's sort of a special O'Reilly's that deals in paint, but I'm sure any of it can get it. Or any of your paint stores, you can turn out a paint job that will look as good in 10 years as it does today if this vehicle sits outside every day in the Texas heat for 10 years. Now let's go through and talk about the different kinds of primers, the primers that you'll need, the primers you don't need, and what the different primers are. Now you can look to the automotive industry throughout the years to sort of see what the best available materials were if you sand through paint on a 50s car you'll come across a red primer now this was a lead based often lacquer based primer this was a pretty good primer it worked well uh, it was it was self sealing it stuck well it was a good primer now this is a primer very close to the Ken primer that you'll see on new steel like in a building like the red what they call red iron the, the red oxide paint often today it's no longer a lacquer based paint it's an enamel paint and it no longer has lead in it but this is still a pretty good primer in that it seals and, and keeps things from rusting the problem with it is today is it doesn't adhere nearly as well as some of these newer primers and for something like a building that doesn't matter but if you're painting the side of your coach and you're going to drive into you know an RV park and drag a tree up against the side of you want a good adhesion of the paint so if you head on up until the say the 60s is a self etching primer the self etching primer is a great primer but it's not real user friendly uh, you need really good clean base metal it doesn't work well if you put it over other things like old coatings and paints and stuff and I don't recommend using the self etching primer uh, the next kind will be like the enamels and oil-based primers. Now, oil-based primers are cheap. That's the stuff you see like Rust-Oleum. Uh, it's like often the rattle cans. If you get a can of primer in a rattle can, that's what you'll have. Unless it's self-etching, you can't get self-etching in a, in a rattle can. And this is the paint and primer that you see on a lot of industrial equipment like tractors, you know your lights how they're painted like a welding machine the paint that's on a welding machine and the primers and paints work well in the aspect that they that they protect and they do do that well the problem with them are is that they fade and after 20 or 30 years the actual release and you'll see a bunch of old tractors with or lawnmowers to where you can sort of flake the paint off in chunks and this is often an enamel based paint it's a pretty good paint but it's not what I recommend it's not what you need to use it's cheap and if you're on a very tight budget and you want something that'll look okay and just something you can change the color on that's what I'm talking about the you know pouring the primer on top or something let it run down the side well you can definitely change the color this stuff here is the ticket you mix this and ratios are one to one 
This is the epoxy primer. It's made by several different companies. Transstar is the one I always go to. You can buy it at O'Reilly's. It is a great, great primer. It it sticks to anything. As you when you hear epoxy, you think like glue, and it's exactly what it does. It doesn't have any kind of chemical reactions with other kinds of paints. So I don't recommend using any kind of water-based latex outside. But if you've got some kind of latex paint, if you've got fiberglass, clean metal, old oil based paint, plastic, wood, anything, if you put this epo epoxy over the top of it, it'll stick to it. It's just like mixing up an epoxy like JB Weld or something. Whatever you put it on, it sticks. The flip side of that is that this primer, you can put anything on it. It doesn't matter if it's oil based, urethane, spray can whatever you want to put on top of it it will not have a chemical reaction it works great as a as a base it seals up the metal you won't have any water intrusion behind it you know if it's wood steel aluminum doesn't matter it, it, it sticks anything sticks to it and it seals it up epoxy primer is not designed to be sanded if you need to do some kind of body work you'll need a high build primer something like this. Now you don't need this if you're just painting, but if you've got dents and stuff you're trying to work out, you'll need some kind of high build primer. This is designed to be sanded. Now the epoxy primer has got a uh, a recoat window of like 4 to 36 hours. If you get outside of this window, you must you must sand it, you must scratch it so that whatever you put over it will it will adhere to it. But if you shoot a urethane based system within that recoat window, the epoxy will will sort of bind chemically to the urethane and work like a glue and super glue your paint on your metal or, or whatever is under it, you know, old paint, fiberglass, anything. So the first step is preparation, preparation, preparation. We'll go over that a little bit more when we go outside. This is a grease and wax remover. This is absolutely important. This is like $12, it's cheap, maybe 20 bucks, I don't know. The next thing you will need it's called a tack rag. Let me show you the front of it. <laughs> this is sort of a cheesecloth type stuff. Here's one that's open. Uh, you can open them up and they've got sort of a, a greasy almost uh, substance on them. And what it does is it attracts dust and dirt and holds it. So that when you wipe something off, you can get all the dirt, all the debris, everything off of it. These are very important, they're cheap, they're like three or four dollars. Uh, the next thing I'm gonna say, which is kind of self-explanatory, is you, you've got to sand everything you're gonna paint. You've got to get it clean as far as the dirt. If it's aluminum, you need to scotch brite the aluminum, get the aluminum oxide off of it. Don't get rough with sandpaper to, to grind that aluminum oxide into the, into the aluminum, but you need to scuff it and get it cleaned up. Same with metal, you don't want rust. You know, it needs to be clean. Whatever you're painting needs to be clean. Okay, so let's mix up some primers. So this is a mixing cup. You can buy this at O'Reilly's or any of your paint stores and they're really cheap. This is like a dollar or something. And it's got these different ratios on it. You can see here, let me get you to focus. Come on buddy, you can do it. Here's a one to one ratio. This is what we use on the primer. You go over here, here's an eight to one ratio. This is the ratio we'll use for the actual paint. And they're really, really simple to use. So you simply fill up, you know, to the one or to the two or three or four, depending on how much paint you want to use or primer. And then you'll use the next number. So you fill this up to say two, and then to two, and that'll be a 50-50 ratio. Or fill it up to the four, then to the four, that's a 50-50 ratio. So if you're gonna be spraying, you're gonna have compressed air. If you got compressed air, you need to get an air blower. The first step is take this air blower and go around and get in all these little corners and crevices. Not necessarily to clean it, but if you don't, when you come by here with a paint gun, that paint gun's gonna blow the dirt out from underneath this crevice, and it's gonna blow it right into whatever you're painting, and you do not want that. So we're gonna go through here and go over this real good. Now I've already done it, okay? Next step is take your grease and wax remover. If you got a panel laid down like this, you can just dump a little bit on here. The idea is to get this on your panel agitate it let it dissolve the grease and then you want to remove the liquid with your with your cloth
Now then, at this point, do not touch this with your bare hands. If you do, just go back and wipe it off again. But put a pair of gloves on if it needs to be touched. Next step, take your tack rag, open it up. Fold it up in your hand and make sort of a wad. You want to go over this thing back and forth. Get in all the crevices, all the flat surfaces. And look, you know, look at it. See if you can see anything on the surface. You know, get you a good, a good view of it. Look it over. Make sure it's perfectly clean. Anything on here, you'll see it a hundred times over after you put paint on it. And if there's something on this surface, you'll bury it in the primer and it'll be on here forever. Quick mention about paint guns. This is a $500 set of paint gun. You don't need this gun. Harbor Freight for like $16, $18, $20. The purple gun will work great. The biggest problem I have with their gun is they're not really designed to be taken apart and cleaned. They're sort of used and throw away. A, a, a Harbor Freight paint gun works great. They're the best gun you can buy for $20. Now, is this gun better? Well, sort of, and it's got parts you can replace and you can get pieces for it and it's designed to come apart easier, but don't buy this. Harbor Freight gun will do everything you need to. So, a little paper funnel. Wherever you buy paint, usually will give you these. Dump your primer in. Respirator, and we're gonna take one more tack rag before I spray it. Okay, let's take 30 seconds and talk about this primer and why this primer is so important and what's so different about it from say something you buy at Lowe's. So, a lot, a lot of paints are actually water and air permeable. And so if you put that directly over steel, even if the steel is perfectly prepared and, and ground and sanded to where it's full of scratches, let that bite in, you still will have rust form under the paint. Of course, that jacks the paint off the metal. What this does is this works like an ultra-thin membrane that seals that metal and keeps air and moisture from being able to get to it. Now, obviously, if you've got something like fiberglass, it doesn't really matter if it gets water in it because it isn't going to rust. You still have got to have something that bonds, that adheres to it. and and something like a you know water-based primer like you buy at Lowe's is designed to soak into wood and grab around wood fibers and a piece of metal doesn't have that option you know it never will stick it never will adhere to it that well you'll always be able to take a knife and scrape you know kills primer oil or water-based off a piece of steel and that's not what you want and so this works like a ultra thin membrane that seals it and it works like an ultra thin layer of glue that glues, epoxy glues, whatever kind of material you put on top of the primer. The urethane system I'm gonna use in is Nason's, Nason's Full Thane. This is a single stage coat, it does not require clear. It's easy to use, it's easy to spray uh, a couple of coats and it looks great. I'm fixing to paint this a little bit differently than you'll need to paint yours and there's a couple reasons I'm going to explain. Um, it's very hot outside and my panel is completely flat. Now when you mix your paint you need to mix it like it recommends which is eight parts the paint. Of course your paint may be different. This is your thing. Eight parts paint to one part catalyst to two parts reducer. I'm going to over reduce it. I want to mix it with three parts reducer and I'm going to put one extremely heavy coat. The two reasons is, is you want the paint to lay out flat. You don't want orange peel and if you've got slight imperfections and scratches you want to fill it in. If I put two coats, normal coats on this, as hot as it is without the extra reducer, it's going to dry so quickly that you'll see all these little imperfections. And that's not what I want. Now if you put paint on as heavy as you're fixing to see me do with extra reducer, 
on something vertical it's going to run all the way to the ground but I got two things working against me it's a hundred degrees outside and that thing is out in the sun and it's probably 140 degrees on the surface of that and I hope that doesn't cause me any trouble and I'm not for sure that it won't okay same deal we're using eight to one eight parts paint we'll go up to the five I think it's gonna be a good spot and then the go up to the five here that's a put to the one part catalyst and then I'm gonna go up to about right there that'll be the uh, three parts reducer the reducer is sort of a guess and the reducer is not ultra critical but it needs to be pretty close not sure how well you can see this has only been like 20 minutes but this is dry to the touch this primer dries quickly and it's very hot there's a few pieces of trash that settle in it take your tack rag simply wipe them out we'll just go over this very lightly if you're hot and you're sweating make sure you wipe the sweat off your face because if you drip a drip of sweat in there you'll screw up the paint that's a problem I've had Alright, so being a smart aleck that I am, I'm trying to shoot this video through the reflection of the door. Uh, the paint's only 20 hours old. It's got some dust and stuff in it, and the paint's not cured enough to wipe it or to try to, you know, clean it or anything yet. It, you'll scratch the paint if you run a rag over it. Uh, but it looks pretty good. There's several dirt nibs. I'll try to get pictures of them. It's hard to show them because the camera thinks it's looking at something farther away and focuses away from the what it thinks is a mirror I guess but it looks good I'm happy with it for, for something that sprayed outside the dust it hadn't rained here in two weeks it's dusty there was a little bit of a breeze blowing yesterday it was extremely hot um, it looks great you can't beat that I mean that looks as nice as anything new and this is a far superior system as far as anything you get go as far as rust-oleum or any kind of oil based enamels or anything like this this is a far superior system with the epoxy primer and the good urethane paint this will last probably 30 years it'll last you know at least 10 years and look exactly the same after 20 years it'll still look great you know probably a 30 or 40 year paint uh, I hope you enjoyed this video I hope you got some good information I know I've rattled on and on and on trying to give information and it get, gets kind of boring but uh, if you like the video, please subscribe, give it a thumbs up, give us some good comments. If you've got some, some good ideas on interior paint, that wasn't really where I went with this video. But, uh, you know, one of those is probably in order. That's not my, my expertise. Um, one more thing I want to talk about is a, is a material called Raptor Liner. It's a bed coating like a, like a rhino line type stuff. And it's a urethane based coating and it works very well if you can get up in your fender wells and stuff clean them up spray a coat of epoxy primer and then put that uh, raptor liner over it that stuff sets up it's as hard or tougher than powder coat and it works very well against rocks and mud and in fact my coach i'm planning on doing the whole underside of it this stuff's kind of expensive but uh, if you want something that's going to last it's absolutely worth it appreciate it i'm fixing it Give, well, I got to give this door another day to another day to dry. But uh, after it's dry, I'm gonna install it and finish the uh, video that this is sort of in the middle of. And you can watch it if you want to see me actually reskin a skin the uh, skin the door. But anyway, appreciate it. Catch y'all next time.